In this chapter, we will be studying trigonometry. In this lesson, we're going to focus on how to choose the appropriate trig ratio and how to solve a triangle. Okay, hi everybody. Let's take a look at our, our next lesson here in trigonometry. And we're going to focus here on choosing a ratio and then solving. Okay, so remember what we had done in the last couple of lessons here. And there were four basic questions that we were trying to address here. First of all, we were trying to look for the trig ratio. Okay, given an angle, look at the, uh, try to find the ratio that that creates or uh, that goes along with that with the, the sides of the triangle. Or we take the ratio and go back and try to figure out what the angle is. And then knowing that, once we've got our, our trig ratio, uh, sorry, our trig um, functions understood and down pat, can we use those to find missing parts of the ratio, the numerator or the denominator of the ratio here? Now, like it says right here, most frequently, the things that you're going to get asked to do are going to be to find the angle, the numerator, or the denominator. Okay? And so, once you know that you're not finding a ratio, then it's, it's pretty much easy to, to do here. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to find the reference angle. Okay, and We've mentioned this before. You find that reference angle because that helps you determine the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. Okay? Because from there, I can decide on which ratio it is that I'm going to use, so Katoa. Then I substitute in and I do my solving. Okay? And remember, when you've got a trig ratio here, it doesn't really matter whether this is sine, cos, or tan. It doesn't matter. There are three places or three things here that you might be looking for. You might be looking for the angle. In which case, if you're looking for the angle, you simply have to remember that you're going to have to use the inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent. You might be looking for the numerator. In which case, remember that you're going to take and you're going to multiply that denominator up and you're going to multiply that through by the trig function, and that'll give you the answer. Or you might be looking for the denominator. And if you're looking for the denominator, then remember, you can switch those two, and then you can do the division, and that'll get you the, the piece that you're missing, the, the, whatever the denominator happens to be. So any, those are the ways that we're going to approach that. So now okay, so let's take a look at a handful of problems here. So in each of the following, determine the value of the variable, the unknown. Okay, so here we go. We've got this triangle right here, and I think we can assume that that's the 90 degree. Um, we're given the 17 degrees here, so that's significant. There's my reference angle, which means this over here is my opposite. Over here, the side that's being used to create that angle is going to be my adjacent. And then the one that's opposite the, the 90 degrees, this is my hypotenuse. So... I'm not giving you the opposite side, and I'm not asking you for the opposite side, so it's completely irrelevant to this problem. But I have given you, sorry, I have given you the hypotenuse, and I'm asking for the adjacent. So I think about my SOKOTOA. Remember, break those into threes. Which one of those is my adjacent and the hypotenuse? And the answer is cosine. So the ratio that I get here is the cosine of 17 degrees is going to equal the adjacent, x, the unknown, over the hypotenuse, 12. Okay, so that's what, that's what that says there. So now, because the unknown is in the numerator, I know that I can just multiply that up, right? It's like that cross-multiplication thing. 1 times x is going to be x, and then I'm going to have 12 times the cosine of 17. And so now I just want to evaluate that. 12 multiplied by the cosine of 17. And I'm going to get that x is approximately equal to, what is that, 11.5. Whoops. 11.5. And did I have any units? No, I didn't. So I'll just leave it as 11.5. Good. That's what I'm looking for. Right, let's look at the next one. So here, there's my right angle. Here's the angle that's, that's significant to me. So this is my reference angle, which means this over here is my opposite. This side that's being used to make that 52, this is my adjacent. And this one here, again, opposite the 90 degree, that's going to be my hypotenuse. So I don't give you the opposite. I don't ask you for the opposite. 
So that's not going to be uh, of any concern to me. So again, so katoa, which of these uses adjacent and hypotenuse? And the answer is cosine again. So it's going to be the cosine of 52 degrees will equal the adjacent side x over the hype. Sorry, wow, the adjacent side 8. Sorry, I was anticipating where I was going there. And then the hypotenuse is x. So the important thing here is that the unknown is in the denominator. And remember what we saw? We saw that when that's true, I can swap those two. So I can get x is equal to 8 divided by the cosine of 52 degrees. So 8 divided by the cosine of 52. And I'm going to round that to the nearest tenth. Uh, but that 9 is going to cause this 9 to go up. It's going to bump this up to 13. But 0, because I'm going to go to the nearest tenth there. So it's approximately equal to a 13. OK, now for this problem here, notice in this case here that the unknown is in the position of the angle. Now that's OK. That's, that still helps us identify it as the reference angle. Now, over here, once we know that that's the reference angle, this is the opposite side. And then over here, this is going to be the adjacent side. Again, the side that I'm using to help me build that angle. And then out here, this is the hypotenuse. Okay. Now, I'm not giving you the hypotenuse. I'm not asking you for the hypotenuse. It's not necessary. What's necessary here is the opposite and the adjacent. So I look back at my so katoa. Okay. Don't need that. So I need the one that's got the opposite and the adjacent, and that's tangent. So the tangent of the angle, now in this case the angle is the unknown, so I've got to put an x there, is going to equal 11 over 7, opposite over adjacent. Okay, I don't know the angle, so what I have to do here is I have to do the inverse tangent of that ratio. Remember, that's how we get the angle. So now we pull out the calculator, okay? And we're going to do the second tangent, the inverse tangent of 11 divided by 7. Okay, And I'm going to get that. And if I round that to the nearest degree, I'm going to get that to be 58 degrees. So that's approximately 58 degrees. That's what I'm looking for. OK, now we got one other thing that we want to look at here. And it's called solving triangles. And what we mean when we say solve a triangle is what we want you to do is we want you to find everything that you don't know about the triangle. So there should be six pieces of information, three sides and three angles. In order for you to solve it, it says right here, you have to have three of those. So when we ask you to solve a triangle, we're simply asking you to find the three things that you don't know. Okay? And little, little note down here, when it's solving, it's important to use only the given values in your calculation. If you've made a mistake in one of your calculations, you don't want that to, to influence the answers that you get for the other things that you're looking for. So yeah, we just want to make sure that we're always using the, the information that we, we are given to solve for everything. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here. So we want to solve this triangle right here. I'm telling you that little a is 3.3. And I'm telling you that angle a is 69 degrees. OK. So that's a good starting point here. Now, to start off with, what might we solve for right away? Well, I could solve for angle B right away because I know that the angles add up to 180 degrees. So I could solve for angle B. I'm going to take B is going to equal 180 minus the 90 in the corner minus angle A, the 69 degrees. So 180 minus 90 minus the 69 degrees whoops, is equal to 21 degrees. So I know that angle B is 21 degrees. Now, I'm not going to use that in any of my calculations, but it's good to know. OK, now I've got to choose, I gotta choose one of the sides to solve for here. Now, this is the angle that I was given. That's my reference angle. So over here, this is going to be my opposite side. This here is going to be my adjacent side, and little c is going to be the hypotenuse. So I tell you what, let's solve for the adjacent side here first. Okay, so opposite, adjacent, let's take a look at this. So, 
ka toa. Which trig ratio puts together opposite and adjacent? And the answer is tangent. Now remember, I'm not using the 21. I'm talking about the 69 here. So the tangent of 69 degrees is going to be the opposite side, which is the A here, 3.3, divided by the adjacent side, B. Okay, my unknown is in the denominator. I know that that means I can swap those two. So B will equal 3.3 over the tangent of 69 degrees. And now that becomes calculator work. So 3.3 divided by the tangent of 69. And I'm going to get uh, to the nearest tenth, let's say this is approximately 1.3. I got one more thing to solve for, one more unknown, side C. So again, when I go back to my triangle, I've got this reference angle here. Uh, I've been given the opposite side. Now I want to find the hypotenuse. So what trig function relates the opposite side to the hypotenuse? Right there, sine. So the sine of 69 degrees is going to be the opposite side, 3.3, over the hypotenuse. In this case, it's going to be little c. And once again, this is exactly the same thing that we just did. I can swap the c with the 69, so, sorry, sine of 69. So 3.3 over the sine of 69 degrees. And again, that's just calculator work. So 3.3 divided by the sine of 69. And we get 3.5. Approximately 3.5. And these are centimeters. I should have put the units in there right away. Centimeters. So there we go. We've solved the triangle. We found the three bits of information that we were missing. Okay, let's, let's do another example of that. Just to make sure that you're, you're comfortable with what's going on. So the question is, we want to solve this triangle right here. So I know that B here is 3.5 meters. And I know that C is 7.9 meters. OK, now, this is interesting. Because I haven't been given an angle at all. So when I've got two sides, I think back here. If I want to find the third side, I can just use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so I can tell based on what I'm seeing here that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. I don't know little a, but I do know that b is 3.5 squared, and c is going to be 7.9 squared. So a squared is going to be 7.9 squared minus 3.5 squared. Okay, so I'll go to my calculator. 7.9 squared minus 3.5 squared. And remember, it's got to be subtraction here. In order for me to move that 3.5 over to the other side, I have to subtract it from both sides. And I'm going to get 50.16. That's not the answer, though, that I'm looking for. I need to find the square root of 50.16. So the square root of that answer. And to the nearest tenth, let's say I've got 7.1. So A here would be 7.1 meters, approximately. OK, now let's go up here and let's figure out what the angles are. So let's take a look at A. Let's say A is the one that we're looking for right now. So if that's the case, then the sides that I've got here are going to be the adjacent side to A. And this over here is going to be the hypotenuse. Well, this is going to be the hypotenuse regardless. 7.9 is the hypotenuse. So what trig function puts together the adjacent side and the hypotenuse? Well, the answer is cosine. So it's the cosine of angle A. Whoops, sorry, I got that in the wrong spot. So we're looking at angle A first. The cosine of angle A is going to be 3.5 over 7.9. Now, to get A, we do the inverse operation. Remember, whenever we're looking for the angle, we're going to use that second function, sine, cos, and tan. So this right here is going to be the second cosine, inverse cosine, of 3.5 divided by 7.9. And when I round that to the nearest degree, I'm going to get 64 degrees. Awesome. Now I'm going to change my kind of my line of attack here. 
Now we're not going to look for A, we're going to look for B. But when I do that, that changes how I define opposite and adjacent. Little b now becomes my opposite. Angle side A becomes my adjacent. And C is still a hypotenuse. That hypotenuse isn't going to change here. But now what I've got is, and I don't worry about the adjacent because I didn't have it to begin with, but I was given the opposite, I was given the hypotenuse. That suggests sine, opposite and hypotenuse. So down here, it's going to be the sine of B will equal the opposite over the hypotenuse. But to get the angle, it's the inverse trig function. So inverse uh, sine of 3.5 over 7.9. So I go to my calculator, inverse sine 3.5 divided by 7.9. And I'm getting roughly 26 degrees. Now, have a quick look at this. Just to check, check to see that you've done this right here. If I take 26 and add it to 64 and then add it to 90, so those are the two angles that I found, and I add it to the 90 degrees, look at that, I get 180. That really makes me feel good that, I, that we did that correctly here. So there we go. We've solved the triangle. We found the three missing, missing pieces.